shot, couldn't control it right away. Now Oppon beating it in, shot sent in, blocked again by Borkus. Maya Johnson had a chance on the rebound, but Borkus, it was a 2-0 game when these two met at State last year. That's the score now as we head down the stretch. Another chance. Another push here from the Eagles. Oppheim beat in for Morris. Orcus there with a stick, and she stops it yet again. Tap it out temporarily. Now Ryan Brent has it taken away from him. Deal coming the other way. Mason Deal on a breakout. one nothing, my not. Turnover at the blue line is going to cost you all day long. As they begin their second game in as many days. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Dickinson is a very well-coached team. And Oh, well. Make it 2 nothing on the rebound, Aiden Morelli. I was just about to say how they were gonna, they'd be able to battle back from that, but. The game, Charbonneau Car Center, where you can expect no gimmicks and no games. Visit them online at charbonneaubpg.com, and it does not take the midgets long to put it in. Three goals already. We're not even five minutes in as Dickinson cuts the lead to two to one. Joseph Pop. Still a lot of good hockey left to come your way on Beck Sports. Nick Murphy into the game for the Magicians, chasing this one down behind the net. First off there by Morgan. Warner and the Magicians get another. Their third, not quite seven minutes in, and Minot back up by two. Fridley, who just checked into the game. And the inside out game with Ware, who kicks it out. Fitterer from the corner, no, but a rebound for Ware. Yes, plus the foul. He's working in some new players. Ware is on the bench. Haley Fletcher in the post, replacing Ware as the three is up and good from Fitterer. Keplin with the answer, a pull up three from the UND commit. Going to work against the 2-3 zone. Kick out. Kinnebrew knocks down the triple. Well, there, rebounded by Mogan, who sends it ahead to Holin. Ashley Holin defended by Rudolph. And Holin gets it to go, plus the foul. <laughs> 13 on the shot clock as Ware takes the inbounds. And Ware drives and scores through the contact. Ware hits the deck, no whistle. Ball still in play underneath. Baller can't hit it. Rebound tipped out. Another three on the way, and this time Peterson hits. He leads points all through this game on both sides. You've seen Watford City use four of its five timeouts. A lot of opportunities. Defense of Reese Johnson. Now Knowles with it into the front court. Long three on the way from Mattern. Count it. Pattern working off the screen, bounce pass into the corner, and he's open in the corner. Three on the way, another one from Trayton Mattern. He has all eight of Century's points. Winning their third state title in program history last season. It's their first since 2011. They certainly aren't the favorites, but have enough talent that if things are clicking in February, they could maybe make another run. Three-pointer good from Hagerberg. Pull the trigger. Mattern with the runner. Rebounded down low. And a third chance is up and good from Kraljic. Against the 2 3 zone. Peterson the drive and a great dish for Kraljic who finishes. Foul this half against the Wolves. Taken away from Mattern and coasting to a transition layup. Hagerberg. Percent of their points for the season. But it's a start, and it always helps to know that you've got a guy like Trayton Mattern who can score it when he needs to. Peterson knocks down the three off the feed from Mattern. Their way. Cranston thought about the long three. Back to Cutterloo from the top. About 13 points per game for the sophomore. Here's a kick out open look for Golis, and she drains the three-pointer. 
Peterson thought about the deep two. Instead, here's Holen on the drive through some contact and put her at the line. An and one. Off the curl screen, here's Peterson all the way to the rack through some contact and she's hit by Picard. Zone look again from Watford City. Here's Reichman off the catch and shoot three and she drills it. We're tied at 19. Lead going into the halftime break. Watford City leads by two. Dickerson on the inside. Nice drop off pass to Golis and a chance for Bismarck to take the lead. Now you can tell Bismarck is starting to settle in in the half court now. They were thrown off by the change ups that Watford City was throwing at them, switching from the man to the zone, back to the man. And a second chance. Didn't hit rim though. Shot clock didn't reset, but Reichman, 4 3 of the game. She's got 19. Reichman with a rare miss in the second half and made three in a row before that, but it's still a trip with points for Bismarck. Golas goes off the glass. and 12, a double-double in his first game back. Already four points and a couple of rebounds in this first half. Pull up three, trolley from the wing. Who's headed to play at North Dakota State next year. Legacy as well, they're coming off a, a couple of really good games. And there's just not a pace and they didn't have anything going. They got him the ball in the post. He settled down, took a breath, made a strong move and finished with two. Kurzman, the bank open late on a Saturday. And you can't finish and now John are the other way. Bismarck has done all this without Johnner putting up any points. He had 30. Thomaston from the corner. Big shot needed, and a big answer. Needed that. Here's Kurzman probing. Leaves it back for Johnner. Still scoreless, not anymore. Walker Berg who had four first half points. Now Hins from downtown. Got the offense here in basketball. He had the Stone Cypher from deep. <laughs> what can't? Rebound ultimately secured by Gallenbach. From the wing here, as voted Skunberg second make of the day. He's got five, but in search of a big run. Walters out in front, launching pad. Walters the slam. Dowdy, good. Little City. Also played a tight one against the. On the weekend. Elvick quickly inside. Morgan and it knocked away right to Falk in the corner, splitting a pair of defenders and knocks down the runner. High degree of difficulty right there. Shit now for the Blue Jays. Falk. Selvig finally gets her first. Selvig. Five straight points now for the junior, and Jamestown has its first lead since the early minutes. High post kicks back out. Falk. Straight on and straight in, and the lead is up to six, the largest of the game. Look at Hegerly slashing and scoring through the contact. Morgan and Xander go at it, and the opening tip goes to Mandan. Here we go on Beck Sports. Quick trigger finger, that's why. Three, Megan Xander. They ate that defense away with the poke away, had a two on one, gave it up. Harris with an easy layup. Peterson answers, plus one more. And that time down the floor, Jamestown had three looks at it because the Horgan foul that sent her to the line was actually on a second chance. Thank them. That's it. They're getting a lot of offensive rebounds right now in the last few minutes. Just haven't been able to convert on them. And then all the while getting it going once again. Great look from Xander. Drive baseline. Defense collapses over, and she was able to sling that pass down there. Counted and one. Grace Hagerly. Two. But Xander out. The three. How about the few minutes for Sydney Gustafson? Comes. 
Speaking of the number two scorer, there she is. And you move there by Hagerly, got the defender to fly by, use that power dribble, strong move all the way to the cup. Xander felt that one the entire way. Feels like a question of when, not if, she gets going. Three ball from the wing is good. This is the offense. Much better, and it allows you to go to a high, high-level program like North Dakota State. And now a dump off to Walters underneath. That's a beauty of a play. Point guard right now setting up the offense. Ooh. Gets it inside to Poitra. Nice move by the big man. Weist rejects the screen, attacks baseline, and floats it over the top of Kallenbach. I have six a game. Here's a takeaway. Skunberg, Euro step through the lane and put him at the line for an and one try. Kallenbach, extra pass in the corner with Lamp for three, and he nails it. Departures from a year ago. The best player on each side at the scores table right now. Lamp wants another three, and he's got another three. Third rebound for Eli Klein. And Walters is coming back in right now. Jamestown can see that matchup going against him. Well, from boys drills the three. Five to go. Klein caught in the air, kicks to Aaron's open three, got it. Two point game. We did a game here about three weeks ago. Mandan played Minot. The Braves trailed by 14 with 10 minutes to go as that three is knocked down by Kallenbach. In the first half, up by eight. Weist for three. Got it. Comes up with his 11th rebound. Up ahead to Wingenist. Shot blocked by Girding. Skunberg had it rejected. Kallenbach for another three. How good has he been tonight? Here is Klein. Spins on Wingenis. 15 foot jumper now for Girding to Strong. Oh, what a tip in from Aarons. For Minot to try and pull off the upset, and that's how it would have to be characterized. Minot's just got to be. Oh! Quick redirect in front and a power play goal with 20 seconds remaining. Bismarck takes the lead. I was just about to say, might I just high to make it one to nothing. Good tip. There you got to look at it. Courtesy of our director. Back at you, Mary. Shoveled up to the left point. DDD we go. Held on to by Deeks. Deeks is shot in. Wow. What a great tip that was, good shot. The, the whole play, the whole thing developed, he play a little more physical and try to get some of these turnovers like this, our guys create for themselves. Caleb Petrie, his 15th goal of the year. All the while for the Bismarck High Demons. A oh, goal no. to make it three to nothing. That's yeah, that's exactly a frustrating one for the Braves. They had a tough time getting it out of their own zone, and that's because of that aggressive back check. Just constantly forcing turnovers, and now Minot's on the board. Jack Plemmel. Yeah, that was a nice dump in. Good dump and chase. He won the race for the puck. Ackerman Wall. Good. Now here comes Caleb Petrie. Petrie. Good stick check there by Ben Bone Break. What a goal! another goofy one goes in. And so instead, a chance here for Bismarck High. Played down the left wing, right down Broadway, and a goal! Nick Mortensen for the defense. Yeah, the Nick came in there screaming through the slot. Nobody picked him up. Now, getting their first tally. Yourselves. Yeah. That's exactly what they're going to do now. They're going to cash it in. Make it 6-1 to one for the Demons. Joey Heinert. Stuck his leg out trying to make a hit. They're going to get him for a trip. And that will go by the wayside. It's a Minot goal. And so, I mean, there you go. Case in point. Minot on the board. Aiden Morelli again. In a row against the Bismarck School. It'll be Century outside. 
perhaps creating some positive buzz, getting by Ackerman. The pass right across the face, and Morelli puts it home, bring things off to the right point. Final three here. Cross ice shot in. There's the goal. It's Peyton Fillion. Trying to feed the slot. Morelli was right there. He's got two today. Oh. Off to the right, loose in front, a block, and it goes. Oh, my. Within one, in addition, a penalty assessed on Kayla Petrie. Oh, my. Just off to the left. Got to go to the net. Why not still win oh, it? No. Sent away. An empty netter for Joey Heinert, his second of the day. The Demons will survive.